This tutorial is going to be based on creating a clipping mask in Photopea. We're using Photopea because the majority of people have the ability to use Photopea. It's a web-based program, um, skimmed down from that of Photoshop, but it has a lot of really cool features and very usable features. So we're going to use that today to create a clipping mask and ultimately create a project uh, where we take the clipping mask uh, feature and we use it in a poster design. All right, so just real quick and real simple. Here's the basic concept of creating a clipping mask. I'm going to go and I'm going to grab uh, my photograph from one of my preferred folders. All right, and so here's just a sample of sailboat picture. And as you saw, what I did was I just dragged the picture directly from that folder into the uh, photo P platform. I could have gone file new and created an image that way, um, but because I had no other tabs open, this worked out well. All right, then I wanna be sure, just like in Photoshop, that my layers palette is open so I can see what's going on. So I see that my picture is right here in the background image. Next, again, keeping it real simple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select a shape. And in this case, I'm gonna select the ellipse tool, which is right here, all right? It's on the toolbar. Um, it's uh, directly under the path select and the direct selection tool. All right, and you'll see that I have a few different shapes that I could potentially use. Again, I'll choose the ellipse tool. Currently, my shape will be filled with red. There's no stroke. And here I go, creating my shape, okay? All right, as I stated, my, pick, my uh, shape is filled with red. Now, what I have to do is I'm going to take the picture and the picture has to be above my shape. So as you see, nothing really changed there. Uh, it just, my picture is now overlapping the shape, but the trick is I'm going to now right click on that layer, the layer of my picture, and I'm going to create what's called a clipping mask. As you see, something really nice just happened. Um, my clipping mask uh, formulated and the picture went right into the shape that I selected. We are going to create the shape using one of the states. In this case, we're going to use Connecticut because that's our state. And we are going to be doing a visual journal documentation project. So we are going to um, actually record what we are doing on a daily basis. We're going to take one day um, over the next week or so, and we are going to create a mask using the shape of the state of Connecticut, and we're going to put a picture into it. We're going to also put the word Connecticut somewhere on our mini poster or uh, visual journal documentation, uh, and we're also going to put the date on. And I'll show you that uh, in a moment. But first, let's just go grab the shape of the, of one of the states. And in this case, as I said, would be Connecticut. Um, and we don't really have to reinvent the wheel here. Uh, the states are already in appropriate shapes. They already have shapes to them. Uh, there are plenty of uh, references that we can look for. So here is one. All right, we have a vector image of the state of Connecticut. Look at how simple this is. All I want to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go save image as and I'm going to put it on my desktop as a JPEG. I'm going to click save and it's going to bounce on over to my desktop. Here it is right here. All right, I'm going to bounce back over to Photopea. A lot of bouncing today. And I'm going to simply take that and drag it right in. All right, and I can then Apple Plus, zoom myself in a bit. And that's how I have, that's how I get my reference, my reference uh, picture in order to work with and build upon. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go and grab the state of Connecticut. I am bringing it into Photo P. Uh, I'm going to Apple Plus, zoom in a little bit. Um, and I want to create my own shape. All right. Well, this actually isn't my own shape. It is the state of Connecticut and somebody else actually created it first. But uh, I'm going to use the pen tool, which is right here under the text tool. 
and I'm going to be sure in photo P, I want to be sure that it says shape up here. All right. All right. My fill is going to be red so I can see what's going on. Um, I have no stroke and I have my layers palette open. I can see that I have my vector stock image here as my background image. Now I'm going to be real quick here and I'm going to go around. Okay. And I talked a little bit more about the pen tool and how it worked uh, before. Um, you will need a little practice with this. It's not as easy as it looks, um, especially for first time users, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to get really used to using it as time goes on. Now, for sake of time, because I know that your attention span is that of a uh, child at this point, um, you are probably barely listening to me and I'm very lucky probably if you're actually watching my tutorial at all. Um, I know that teachers usually don't say that, but that is the truth. That's what we feel. Uh, so I'm really hopeful that you've actually read the assignment. That's another big hurdle. Uh, reading has uh, become a, a rare event lately. All right, so hopefully you're at least kind of watching me go along here. And like I said, I'm going to I'm going to quicken this up just a tad so I can get to the really fun part. But you I want you guys to take care in actually creating your shape. So this is going to be a real fun and there was a little couple little divots in there. Um, but we will complete our, our shape right here. OK, then what we're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to find the photograph that you'd like to insert into that shape and you're going to simply load that right into photo P. You're going to see it comes in right on the top of your shape. If it doesn't, you're going to bring it to the top of the shape and you still have the ability to, um, to move things around a little bit. Now you'll notice that it's got these little, uh, squares on the edges of the photo. That means you have to hit the return key. All right. To put it in place. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that layer and create what's called a clipping mask. And if I'm really lucky, my picture is going to actually, um, oh, I've still got the pen tool on hand, uh, go enter, enter into my shape tool. Okay. So I created a shape accidentally up here. I'm going to delete that layer. I'm going to make sure I have the move tool in my hand and I am able to move this picture around. You'll see this little black edging here. That's because I still have the background layer, the visibility on. Let's turn that off. That looks better. All right. You'll see that I have uh, my, my red fill, which allows me to see how much of the state I still want to fill. So I'm going to go back up to the picture right here. And this is a little bit different in photo P than it is in Photoshop. Um, I have to hit command alt T in order to get the transform, um, the transform command to pop up. I'm going to hold down the shift key. All right. And I am going to, cause I want to keep things in, I want to keep things proportionate and I want, you know, some of that water down here. I want to compose my picture in an interesting way. I see a little bit of sky, but I want to make sure I filled my entire state. All right, now I'm going to hit the return key when I'm uh, relatively happy and I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see. All right, what's going on now when I want to move my shape plus my picture, I'm going to select both of these things with the, the shift key All right, both of these layers. And now I should be able to move the entire shape, which is awesome. Okay. All right. Next, what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to choose to create a cool design here and I'm just going to continue onward real quick with this. Um, I'm going to take another layer. All right. I'm going to use my text tool. Um, and I'm going to type in Connecticut. Okay. That's a little bit large, my text. So I'm going to go over here and resize it. Okay. And this has a sliding scale, which is kind of nice. All right, so I'm going to place that right over there, right over my uh, the picture of my state. If I want to, I can go back and straighten out my state a little bit later. Um, and maybe I will actually take the shit, the two layers, and I will do the Command-Alt 
transform. And maybe I just want to straighten that out a little bit. Okay, it was bugging me a little. I hit the return key again. All right, now I'm going to take the word Connecticut, bring that down a little bit. And then because I want this to be almost a journal entry, my vision is that we could all potentially draw the state shape, slide a picture in a photograph. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, you know, um, we've been social distancing, we've been isolated, but maybe you've been out in your yard in your neighborhood doing things that you don't normally do. So we can potentially do a project where um, we do a journal entry, a visual journal entry. So that's, that's sort of my vision with this. So I am going to, again, take my text tool and I am going to put the date for 2020 up here. And I kind of want a cool statement with this. So I'm going to actually make this larger and I'm going to actually change the color a little bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I've decided to do, what I just decided to do was I'm going to put a background layer on. I'm going to bring this all the way to the bottom of all my layers. And I've decided that I would like to fill using the paint bucket tool. All right. The background of my image. All right. With a uh, color. All right. So in this case, I'm going to go back to my date and I'm going to change that color. I double clicked on the T tool. Click OK. And I now want that to be white. I think that looks kind of sharp. And I'm going to take Connecticut and I'm going to actually lighten up Connecticut a little bit as well. Uh, and I'm going to see if I like the way that looks too. Hmm. Maybe just a little bit lighter on the Connecticut. Click OK. All right. And then uh, what I'm going to do is let's take everything except for that color in the background, that color tone in the background. Let's move everything down a little bit. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Okay. And how about one more thing? How about if I take this background layer that I created and how about if I stroke it, let's see on the inside, I don't want to stroke it red on the inside. I want, um, I want kind of a nice, like a darker color so that it might show up. I'm going to say, okay, here. Then I can change the size and you see the stroke. The stroke is kind of hard to see because I have a, a black background. Uh, but let me actually change it to white just so you guys can see. Click OK. Just so you can see the uh, stroke changing. I'm going to click OK. All right, and there it is. OK, so there's the stroke. So I'll do a real fine white stroke on it for right now. Click, click OK. And now there is my journal entry, which I noticed that after I zoomed out, I'm going to center that a little bit more. Zoom in. And now I'm going to export. That looks pretty sharp. Okay, so um, file, let's save as a PSD. Okay, so I save my layers. I'll open that in Photoshop later on if I choose to. And also I am going to file, export this as a PDF. I'll save that. Um, yeah. 
That was really strange. Not quite sure why I did that. Let's try this. Export it as a JPEG. Let's save it. Drag it over. Replace it. Open that. And voila. Okay, and we're all gonna be making one of these. And I think that's gonna be really, really cool. Turn it in when you're done. See you guys later. Good luck and have fun.